Okay guys, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to test out uh, some of the dynamic cloth simulations uh, whilst uh, sort of wrapping it over this character here. So I've got this little character and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take her and uh, just, just centre this up and I'm going to lock it to here. I'm going to turn perspective off as well. And I'm just going to turn it this sort of sideways so it can the cloth can basically run over the top of her. Okay, so uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to append in a nice little plain 3D. Here we go. And I'm going to select that down there. So it's selected. And I'm going to take that cloth and we're going to move it. So I'm actually going to rotate it sideways 90 degrees. Oop. And I'm going to move it on the top. Now you can't see it because it's one-sided. So I'm going to put a bit of thickening on this using our dynamics so dynamics now has got a feature of adding thickness to any of single sided meshes yeah so that's just one part of a mesh you can add thickness to it not a sealed mesh just a, a thickened mess mesh so I'm gonna bring this out I'm gonna see that thickness is being added to that I don't want that much I just want a little bit here uh, just to give us a simulation of what we're going to look at. Okay, so this is a fairly low resolution model. It's not that high. Um, I do have dynamics on, so obviously if I drop that down, it's going to be a little bit quicker probably to simulate. Um, so cutting it down that much is going to be a little bit too much. So I'm going to take it to level one. And we're going to just check this out. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm going to turn the floor off because we're actually going to have it colliding with uh, her. So you probably saw on other simulations, if I was to take this piece, I could actually um, collide it. If you open up your dynamics tub, if you just go to dynamics and click here and drag across, then it'll open up the side. And if you've got a uh, floor collision turned on, then it will collide with the floor plane, okay? Um, so we're gonna actually have it collide with her. So let me just show you what happens when it collides with the floor plane. So I'm just gonna put this uh, back here like so something like that doesn't matter too much i'm going to put it there and we're just going to have a look at it while it collides with the floor so i'm going to run the simulation this is just a default setting so i'm going to run this simulation you can see that's what's happening it's colliding with the floor however let me go back a few here if i run this simulation now what you're going to see is going to pass straight through her and that is basically because i haven't got collision volumes turned on so if i turn collision volume on here by clicking in here then uh, it's actually going to work out her collide or her collision and it will collide with her when i run the simulation so if i run it now you're going to get this sort of thing happening now this is what we're going to be playing with because we can make this look better at the moment you can see it's just dropping straight through and it will actually um, go straight onto the floor and collide with the floor if i don't want it to collide with the floor i can turn floor collisions off which will help it a little bit um, be a bit better but then it will go straight through the, the floor so you notice it's just basically gone straight through her now there's a reason a few reasons why it's gone straight through her one is um, our simulation iterations are not high enough so if I turn these up to about 167 now and I run this you're gonna see it slightly performs in a different way and it kind of clings to her um, quite a bit more so those iterations really slow it down now if you do have problems because this will add speed um, on this actual simulation then you might want to turn um, gravity strength down a bit which can also help so I'm going to show you I'm going to turn crank this up to about 620 now and we're going to run it and you can see it's a lot more accurate now can see there but we can get it to be a little bit more accurate than that so i'm going to take this down to 100 that we had before and you notice that it'll go straight through the model basically like that it will kind of run off um, so what happens if i turn the gravity strength down it's going to slow everything down and it's just going to actually do the same as turning up the simulation iterations notice it's clinging better to it so basically what you can take away from this is by actually getting the simulation iterations correct that's this button here and adding more it's going to be closer to the model it's going to be more accurate to the model um, by turning up the gravity strength it's going to go faster and the 
simulation iterations are not going to keep up with it because it's flying down so quickly so it kind of pulls through the model so as a kind of um, balancing act if you get your simulation iterations right and you maybe reduce the v the gravity strength down then you can get it to perform much better so if I come down here I'll, I'll take this down to like 48 and I'll turn gravity up to max and we'll just reset this so that's up to max. So watch this now. Whoa, straight through it. Hardly any changes at all. Now, if I slow this down, so it's slowed down. This is probably a little bit too slow. You're going to see just by changing that gravity strength, it's going to leave a little bit more time for the simulation iterations to keep up with it. Do you notice how it's being a bit better there? So it's got the same iterations, but I've just turned the gravity down. So get that right in your head because that makes a big difference. Also, be very careful with the amount of polygons you've got on this. Now, this is dynamically simulated, so there's not too many polygons. But if you do, if you subdivided this a lot of times, it could cause a lot of problems because the computer might not be able to keep up with that amount of polygons or that amount of vertices and trying to work them out as it works its way through it. So these are two things to definitely bear in mind when you're working with this sort of stuff. So that simulation iteration will give you a really good start. And then I turn this to about five or six and I should get a pretty good flow on this. So you can see that's pretty accurate. You know, you can probably get it a bit tighter. Let's just slow this down a touch here and let's just crank these up a little bit more and see if I can get this to be a little bit better here. So you can see already it's looking a lot better on that model as it slips down. Now also, this is something else to bear in mind, we got a firmness. So this is how firm it is. So if I was to do it like four, it's going to, I'm gonna turn this down just for speed, just to show you guys at speed. It's gonna be a bit firmer. So it's gonna be more like a leather. Do you notice that? So if I do exactly the same now and turn firmness down to one, uh, it's gonna be a bit more like cloth. Do you see that? So that firmness will dictate whether it's a kind of like a silky material or whether it's a leather material going over the top. And you can turn that strength down there as well. You can see what that does when I do it. That will kind of be really, look at that, it's really kind of like almost like water. So that firmness, that strength of that firmness is also reacted in there. So you've got two controls. You've got that firmness and you've got that strength of firmness as well. So by again playing around with these. So you can speed up your simulations by cutting iterations down and um, increasing the gravity strength. But then you're going to not get a good result. So you might want to turn that gravity strength down a bit so the iterations keep up with it. Or turn the gravity strength up and make sure that you've got more simulation iterations. Yeah, sorry that's confusing for you guys, but kind of the only way to sort of explain it. So you've also got a resolution here. This is the v collision volume resolution. So what I want to do now is just show you kind of how close it's getting to it as we're working with this. So I'm going to take this model and I'm just going to go back with her. So I straighten her up and I'm going to take this. I'm going to take her about there. And we're going to look at what happens when it collides with this with gravity turned on. So I'm flicking back to this now. Just turn this off for now. And we're just going to run this. So it's run straight through her now. Um, probably need to turn this down a bit. Oh, might need to bring it across a little bit more. I need to recalculate the collision volume. Okay, make sure you do that. There we go. And you can see that's pretty good. Look, it's kind of wrapping right on her head. Do you see that? So what happens if I change this a little bit and I just turn this inflate down to zero here and you'll notice it's kind of still wrapping on it but it's cut in slightly there. Do you see that? So if I turn this inflate up, let's redo it, it's kind of much higher. So it gives an inflation or an up and down level. It's kind of weird the way it um, says inflate because I think it should be kind of surface closeness or something because it's not, it kind of inflates around the model, um, which is kind of weird. So I always like to put this 
one's pretty good because it kind of goes straight on the surface but remember also we've got dynamics on we've got this uh, thick skin turned on so if I was to turn it off you can see that's the bottom of it so let's run this again let me just um, press Control Z a couple of times here and let me just run it again with an inflate of one so let it go off the head a bit there and you can see it's that bottom edge that's right on that's right over it you know so it's that sorry that's that top edge that's right over the top do you see that so what you can do is if you're 3d printing these sort of things you might want it to go inside a bit so I'd probably turn it down to this let me go back a few okay so I'll probably turn it down to 0 0.2 and that way it's going to cut into the head like that which will be good for 3d printing because obviously it's cut into the model so that can help you guys out as well pretty cool um, so there you go a little bit more on that and that thickness now I also want to while I'm on this I want to go into solo here and I just want to show you what happens if I turn gravity off and I put a inflate on so I'm going to turn the collision off just have inflate on X Y and Z this is the amount of the inflate this setting um, applies for the same for deflate expand and contract is just the amount so if I run this simulation what you're going to see is this is going to kind of go up um, uh, sorry let me just put it in expand and you're going to see it expands out and we can also go to inflate I'm going to increase this amount Oop. Now, sorry, with this, um, if I go and grab something like the model here, so I've got I've got her, let me just come back into this, and I was to use inflate in here, so I've got this collision volume, I've got inflate turned on, watch what happens to the model when I run this. So it's going to inflate, and because um, my model's quite dense, sometimes it is a little bit unresponsive um when you do this but i can inflate it um i can take this amount down a little bit more like this and you can run it and you can get this kind of inflation now the same will apply with the uh de inflate as well which is a bit like a balloon so this is kind of effect you're getting and the expand which is a kind of um that's inflate and expand which is not what i wanted to do uh, press the escape key as well i find that's a good way to get back quickly so if i turn turn expand on just expand you can see it's going to kind of expand outwards um, the inflate kind of like a balloon expand kind of pushes it out um, but remember this is uh, a f it's not that heavy a mesh but it's heavy enough to cause some problems um, sometimes depending on your system speed of course and contract or just contract it in so you can definitely play around with these um, see what it's giving you so this is a contract which is kind of pulling it all in evenly um, or not evenly it's kind of it's kind of weird effect quite nice um, so there you go that's a little bit on this here so I'm still playing around with lots of these settings but I do find that that um, definitely take note of what I was saying about that um, simulation iteration and that uh, gravity strength that you've got there um, getting it to work see I've got gravity collision volume collision volume I need to recalculate every time the models moved and then it will work like that so pretty cool let me just take this let me, let me move it let's move it there very cool so it's great and of course because I've got the um, dynamics on here I can increase this level in here and make it look better put that up to four run a simulation it's running a bit slower because I've increased this a bit in here but it's very good and also remember guys 
you can always use those brushes that you've got in here so if I go to BT on the keyboard I can use this um, uh, transpose cloth brush which is now activated notice there and it works with the dynamics that you've got set so if I take this and I move it down I can kind of take my time if I do it really quickly you're gonna have problems you need to do it nice and slowly like this and notice if I do that it kind of goes a bit whoa you can pull it through the model so be a little bit careful but um, by using this you can actually go in here and use things like the um, you know move things on the radius there bring this down over the top you could then start the simulation again if you wanted to so you've got full versati versatility in here now I would suggest maybe turning this down a little bit here and um, it will run a bit quicker then if I put this down to two and then I run this simulation it's going to be a lot quicker and gives you quite a good so if I want it to be a little bit more cloth like I could turn that strength down a little bit more and you get that kind of thin pulling out right do notice also that it stretches so you can avoid a little bit of this and also notice that it's also colliding with itself do you see that to stop colliding with itself you can turn on self collision so if I put it about two now it's as act does add extra time to the simulation but will make it not overlap like you were seeing earlier so if I do this now it will collide with itself do you notice how it's colliding with itself which gives you a little bit more of a realistic look and then it will finally reach there now if you run this simulation too quickly because you notice it's pulling there at the top and it keeps running if I run this too much it will actually stretch the mesh so you have to be careful so to avoid that I mean if I run this really quickly let's turn these iterations down and turn the gravity strength up look what happens it kind of stretch 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 it will keep going stretching which could be quite good for a skirt but the actual original surface area was not like this it was much smaller than that so you can stop that by turning the everything slowing everything down basically maybe turning the iterations up turning the gravity down a bit and you're going to get less stretch now another way that you can do it is actually to do a morph target of it so if you come down to morph target and you store the morph target okay and now I run that simulation it's going to give you less stretch because it will take note of the morph target so that can be quite a good way to work with it as well so notice it's not stretching so much of course you know you can always stop that simulation before it completely finishes as well so you can do something like that move it up slightly so it covers our model and there you go you've got something that's pretty cool so guys a little bit more on cloth dynamics I'm still searching of a useful way to use this on some of the courses it's going to be a lot easier for me to use it on things like the anatomy and the 3d printing course but I do want to incorporate um, dynamics in some shape or form uh, into the jewelry course so that's what I'm heading towards I'm going to be showing you a few more tips and tricks um, or a few more of the features that actually come with uh, ZBrush 2021.5.1. So I'll be showing those uh, over the coming few days or weeks.